pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Welcome, everybody. Okay, first up, department hits. Yep. Chief uh, Woodward. Uh, Acting. Depending. Uh, so a couple things. We started working with the project homebound and planning for that for going to the event on the 11th of November. Uh, we're also police department teaming up with the VFW and the local combat veterans motorcycle association to do stuff a cruiser again on 26 november that's toys for tots basically uh, we did that last year it's a big success 28 september 1800 is the homecoming parade it'll start Abishaw and come down main street like they do every year that's the those events that we're working on uh, as far as what we've been up to i pulled numbers for the last month from august 18th to today uh, call for services are 435 We've covered 13 accidents, we've had six arrests, and 111 traffic stops. So that's the quick rundown for the police department. That wasn't one of them. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for us, um, we had 212 EMS calls, 127 transfers, 85 uh, 911 calls. Eight fire calls um, that puts us at 51 for the year for fire calls. Um, we do have our fire prevention parade in October. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but I'll get with John to make sure we get our parade permit. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Two ambulances that we ordered two years ago, I think, yeah. should be in <clears throat> next month, I hope. Um, and we still have one on order for next year. Um, other than that, it's been business as usual. Revenues look decent. Um, expenditures look in line. Report. Yes. Um, continuing to work on grant applications. Tomorrow is the mandatory um, webinar for the groundwater trust. That would be for the tank project. <clears throat> Still um, am behind on trying to get an RD application for Summer Street. The safety committee had um, 
Sergeant Ladd from the State Police come last Thursday and he conducted the civilian response training, which is basically just dealing with um, difficult people. And it was more of an active shooter uh, type of thing. Um, working on reimbursements for a number of different grants and then most of the other time is the housing um, recommendations and audit that resilience planning generated. Uh, we already met, Ben and I met with resilience. Um, we've submitted the recommendations to both the zoning and planning boards. We're going to focus on four topics, priority topics to go to get either new draft language or amended statutory language that will all go or warrant. And it's still pretty substantial because the four uh, topics will be um, mobile homes uh, and rec vehicles it's kinda, and um, accessory dwelling units, ADUs, short-term rentals, and um, cluster housing. So um, I expect to have a large scale public forum probably in November before the, pub the series of public hearings have to start on zoning amendments because we'll really need to have some feedback because I uh, um, get it in the press and everything because I don't want to be blindsided when it comes to town meeting. So you guys will be invited. Okay. Barbara doesn't appear to be here, so we don't have a report from the library. Okay. I don't have anything else for anyone. I don't. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, guys. <coughs> we have. Uh, you have an appointment, uh, Scott from Treble Energy, is here to talk about energy aggregation, um, basically community power, um, kind of goes along with what we, we've heard a few times over the last few months. So, Scott, I'm <coughs> it up to you. Sure, thank you. I'm gonna pass a couple things out here, gentlemen. There you go. Probably some of the uh, went ahead and. Did that for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll leave this out for anybody who wants to, to look at it. Um, hi, my name is Scott Del Castro, and uh, I'm the owner of Trey Bell. And I just wanted to stop out today. Um, Jen uh, Brown is from New Hampshire, and set this meeting up for me. Um, I uh, now have a place in Franconia. So uh, you know, my wife and I are from Ohio originally, where we started aggregation. We're one of the largest in the state of Ohio. Uh, we have over 170 different combined electric and gas programs, which is um, pretty enormous. <laughs> started the company in 9 of 2010. I was an ex-corporate banker, worked with a number of different uh, uh, different suppliers and decided that there needs to be the risks needing to be reweighted towards um, communities like yourself meaning a lot of the times these supply houses come in they tell you what it is you're not even familiar with energy you know contracts get pretty skewed the wrong way um, and so i decided to um, enter into the into the aggregation um, world so <clears throat> Thanks for having me. Um, I do appreciate it. I'm going to just uh, uh, go through a few things here, uh, a little bit about Trevell, and then um, and then we'll just answer any questions you might have. So uh, my mission has always been to uh, lower energy supply costs for uh, residents. It's always been my mission is to do that. We deal in uh, site efficiency. Many years ago, they did away with T12 you know, bulbs uh, in the lighting. We went ahead and did T5 and then did some of the, of the LED. Uh, we also pursue a lot of the different federal um, incentives that are available, state and federal uh, incentives for our clients. And uh, that helps um, 
save them money and it also helps save the residents money. Uh, so uh, one of the things that always gets asked to me by residents and as well as uh, selectmen like yourselves, what is the trade off difference? Um, first of all, when I started the company, I did it. <laughs> I did all aspects of it, as you can imagine, when you're a small company. I kind of know every single piece of the puzzle that goes that goes through. I know all the questions your residents generally going to ask. Typically, um, we keep making our process better and easier for you because if you're going to have an aggregation program, look, you're going to have issues, right? And you're going to have phone calls, and so. My job has been to design probably one of the best programs in terms of just being able to answer those questions and anticipate that to make it a smooth running program, you know, versus just getting hit with a bunch of different calls. We have a, a resident focus. Um, my approach is very consultative. I'm not. A, uh, I'm an ex corporate banker, which probably means I'm I'm pretty dry, <coughs> right? So I'm not really. Um, I'm not here to sell you on anything. I'm going to just tell you how it is and work through the issues with you, and be a good partner to you. Um, <coughs> we run a very specific RFP process, which has resulted because of our process in some of the lowest rates um, in in our state over the over the years. When I say the lowest rates, everyone gets good rates. It's a, largely a part of timing the market, the process, I can tell you that we have set the lowest rate repeatedly in our state, which is a big deal. Like, you, if it happens once or twice, it's lucky, right? If it happens a lot, it means you're doing something right. And I think that's one of the things that we, uh, that we pride ourselves on. We do have a lot of feedback for you, the selectmen. Uh, if you guys need to get on our portal, you can get to information very quickly. We have, um, we can put together a website for uh, the town of Lancaster for residents to get information, but we're very communicative and uh, transparent. We also have, as you know, uh, customer service. I mentioned Jen earlier, she was with our company years ago. Um, she had some health issues left, came back, she's now back, um, and she's very good with residents. And so having someone who can really answer your questions not have a supplier i'm talking about someone who just wants to get your your resident your neighbor your your family where they need to go quickly that's really important it's not about <coughs> sitting on an 800 number forever and not getting getting run around i mean it's just you want to get to, to, to answers quickly um i've talked a little bit already about the low rates um as you know all we're trying to do is you guys have probably you guys have heard the um the presentation already before, but we are just trying to pull together the citizens' purchasing power, not just with this uh, this group, but others as well. I will just tell you one of the one of the fallacies that comes up all the time is you have to be huge, a big town to be able to get uh, cheap electric. I will let's just say that there's influence in the market that you have, but some of the smallest towns we've ever had townships in Ohio we've had have set the lowest rate in the market because if you think about it suppliers will get thin on their margin you know we're already as a, as a consulting firm thin more thin than you would be if you were you know working with a commercial customer but at the end of the day if you're going to buy energy or if you're buying a stock same thing right markets move constantly if I want to buy a share of Microsoft today, you go to the market and you buy it, whatever it's trading at. If I want to buy 1,000, 10,000 shares of that of Microsoft today in the market, I hit the button 10,000, it's still the same price. You see what I'm saying? There's not like a discount at different levels. It's just everyone skinnies up large because we're pulling together so many people. So I would just tell you, don't be, um, don't fret if, link, if the town wants to do their own thing and be very, have their own program and their own, you can still get very, very competitive rates, all right? It's a, it's a very, it's a, it's a fallacy that you have to have massive numbers to do something. Now, on the other hand, Treybell does have big numbers. A lot of the suppliers we, we do work with already, okay? Any questions about that this far, anything? Okay. Um, you know, we've talked about the community aggregation choosing a generation, a generation supplier on, on behalf of its residents, and that's what we're, we would be going out to bid and doing for the residents. 
Um, the community will at some point send out opt-out letters. I want you to know these programs are very um, made to be uh, protecting of the resident. There's no opt-out fee. They can come and go anytime they want. Um, nowadays, we're, we're doing a lot more of a, let's just say somebody in the, in the, in the community doesn't or can't afford uh, solar, uh, you may have solar be how you set up your program, so all of it's solar, so they do get to participate. Um, there are times when we set up even greater program benefits that might be able to subsidize other different types of um, programs, like maybe independent home, individual home uh, solar installation. So there's a lot of different things you can do to customize the program for your specific community. All right. Um, what we, uh, if you guys have had someone here to talk, uh, have you guys discussed uh, putting this before the voters here in March? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that that's pretty likely to happen? Well, we're in the early stages think, right now. That's kind of a loaded question, wasn't it? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we have, Sorry about that. We're going to have our first meeting on Thursday with we'll go forming an energy committee for the town so that we can take that step for March. Step, the first step. Okay. For March. All right. Well, I was going to talk about the energy committee, but um, <coughs> that's good to know that you're already getting to that point. So, um, so I have a couple of questions. So how long have you been here in the state of New Hampshire? Because we just passed this, I mean, we just started, implemented this law, right? Yeah. I'm on the, I'm a state representative. I'm on the energy committee. Okay. So I was part of the bill that went yeah. through for this. Um, so did you just come here once the bill was passed or? Um, it's a twofold question. So we're, Trey Bell is, uh, uh, we've, uh, we're very large, as I mentioned, in Ohio. We're moving into New York, and we're also moving into New Hampshire. One of the things that people have said about what we do, uh, Ohio has become extremely saturated. Like, it's pretty much almost all aggregated. Um, so we're, uh, we just, people have always said, Scott, you've got a really good platform. Yeah, it works really, really well. Um, my educational process that I go through that you guys are all learning through, I've been through all these learning curves and I've got a lot of my, my like the opt-out letters, the um, educational prior to it getting approved, all that stuff. In fact, my company specifically came up with like a, we have to take everything to the ballot in our state, but here you don't, okay? So, but you do have to educate people along the way. We think it's super important. Um, since day one, I always felt like we need to be more communicative. They used to just throw it on the ballot and say, okay, it almost always passes. But people don't know why. I think it's important not only beforehand for people to understand what they're getting into, but then afterward it cuts down on the headaches and the questions and the phone calls afterwards. It's not like foolproof, right? But it puts you leaps and bounds ahead of the curve if you get at it early. And so we did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned a couple questions. Well, that was just one. I was just curious okay. when, you know, so you basically, <coughs> once it became that we started this, I mean, we've been kicking this aggregation around for the last three years. Uh, yeah. it, was down, it was created down in the Lebanon area that handled yeah. wanted community ag aggregation, and that's how we. I'll tell you in the beginning, when we opened up Ohio, um, we weren't one of the first, but uh, my company continues like this this specific ballot coming up in November I have another <coughs> 15 communities going to the ballot which in Ohio is crazy I think the most I've ever done personally was 21 all at once in, you know in one in one ballot initiative so I'm very familiar with the concept of what you're going through and so it, it's not going to be a big learning curve for me I just have, I've had to, not that I have to, I have had to go back, read all your laws, make sure I'm conforming with them, take my, what we call plan of operation and governance, you know, the plan to put this into motion that just has to be tweaked for New Hampshire, and we're up and running. And I'm already approved here in, uh, in New Hampshire, okay? So that part's out of the way with the commission as well as with the state, Secretary of State. Uh, you know, if there's any questions that uh, I, I just wanted to kind of talk for the, for the residents real quickly, you know, 
billing is handled as, as it always has. You can do budget billing. It's always it's a, it's a part of part of it. Um, you're only paying uh, the utility. The utility passes along that that payment to the alternative supplier. And uh, as you guys know, rates have been uh, quite expensive here. Um, <laughs> But it's not, it's not uncommon for us to see 15, 20, 30% savings off of what the utility is doing. And there was, a, there was an early concern that residents said, well, won't the utility hate us for, um, for deregulating? And that's not, I don't, that's not the case. They still get their transmission distribution charges. They still collect the funds. It's not. It's, they're not going to not answer to your home if it if the power goes out. They still do that. They, I mean, they encourage. I mean, Eversource encourages you to go out and find your own power now. You know, yeah. In the last couple of years, we deregulated in seven, 17. They they went out of the generation business here. Yeah. And, and like I said, the last three years we've been kicking this around. But well, uh, it amazes me. I used to get pulled over in the, in the middle of the street when I was going to meetings, and people were like. No one's going to come to my house, and when the power goes out, I'm like it's not like that. It doesn't happen like that. So, so uh, I just want you to know it's going to be good. So I heard some things at the beginning of your meeting too, just so you guys know. Trey Bell, we we believe in being in the community. This isn't a sale to us. It's it's pretty real. We want to be a part of this community as well as the others that we do. Um, we've done things like, um, and I had a few things here. Um, Christmas parades, my wife and I go out to, if you guys had a Christmas parade or anything like that, we get involved, her Toys for Tots, we, uh, we raise money for Toys for Tots. Um, we actually gave money for uh, uh, the firehouse or, or the uh, ambulance services to get a defibrillator. I was quite happy when it saved two lives the day, the day after they got it. So <coughs> those kinds of things are, important to my company i just want you to know it's just we're not here to be done someone mentioned the playground we've given money to help construct playgrounds for the kids um, there were solutions base group there was a a community that wanted from their road to be able to get um, power to their park pavilion they were talking somewhere north of forty five thousand dollars to do that we got them a community grant and uh, Trey Bell helped with the rest of it. And uh, we put in solar on the park pavilion with batteries, and it was a solution for like 9,000 bucks. I think that was a, I just happened to hear it in the meeting, came up with a solution. Three weeks later, we had everything going together. So those kind of things are, you know, that's what I'm here for. I'm a resource for you. Um, I, that's kind of concludes everything I wanted to talk about. You know, I don't, uh, I, I like to introduce the topic. Sounds like everyone's heard a lot about it, but uh, you know, what would be sort of your next steps then? Obviously, the committee goes together, and then you'll have some discussion about what what maybe to do. Yep, I mean, definitely. I mean, I know a little bit, obviously, from my what I do in the state house, but I want the community's input. We have no input from the community right now. Most yeah. people don't know, you know, and like last year, we got racked up to a 22 and a half cent rate through Eversource that people were locked people. I mean, it's gone down 40% now, but it's even to me, I should have, it should have been put out there more than to go out and get your own power before it, it hit. Yeah. Last summer we knew when, when it hit the end of August, a lot of people got rocketed with us. Yeah. So uh, a lot of mistrust with, when it comes to power. Yeah. No, <laughs> and a lot of education needs to be done. Yep. So if I was going to make an offer to you is if, if you decide that you guys in the committee start speaking with your residents, maybe, you know, if there's something that you guys would like for Trade Mill to get involved in, we can, we can attend meetings, we can come out here, we can even send literature out, which is part of our process. It's not just uh, put it on the internet, hope people read about it. We actually send direct mail to your residents at our expense um, with hopes that, you know, I may lose, you know, you might get to next March and say we're not going to do anything, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. I think it's important for us to have, be out in front of it, educate, and don't expect people to come to you. You have to go to them to explain it and bring them out of their homes to here or, or get the questions brought to you because they won't, they won't, a lot of people won't come. I mean, how many people are in this, in this town? 
Okay. Yeah. All right, because I think I read somewhere, you know, 2.3 kids or 2.3 people per household, get, you know, 1,200. But of those people, this is, you know, what do we have here? 15. So you have to get out and talk to them. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, it, it's important. All right, well, thank you, everyone. It's been good listeners. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Yep. I would make a motion to accept the minutes from September 5th, 2023 meeting. I'll second that. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that's the logical step forward myself. And how do you want to handle that interview? Do you want it to be just you guys? Do you want to have a representative of you and then some other people? I'll tell you that I, I um, would Chris St. Cyr, who was a, a, a previous um, candidate, yes. yeah, sergeant. Yes, he, he was sergeant with our, our PD. He stopped in last week and said he would be more than happy to help um, if, if we. If you guys wanted to form an interview panel, you could certainly the, um, involve. I think Eric, Finch, Eric Becker mentioned um, <coughs> interest in serving as on an interview panel as well. Okay. Oops. I think any interview panel should include all three selectmen. If uh, Chris wants to join or Eric wants to join, I don't have issue with that. No, I agree. I agree totally. Yeah, yeah. no problem. So as soon as we can schedule something to all of us meet. So if you three, if, if you feel that you three are the most important parts of that panel, you three decide when you want all meet, and then I can let Chris and Eric know, and, and John. And work it out. And then they can work it out. If they can't make it, they can't make it. But obviously, if you guys want it. Well, obviously, John's got to make it. But. <laughs> it <works for> you. <laughs> Did you say that? I don't remember. That's okay. Kathy Jean said she'd, like, she'd certainly be willing to serve on a panel as well. Well, this all right. is, if all three of us are going to be there, obviously she can be there. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. The, um, can we schedule it for next week? You got anything next week? No. Nope. Supposed no, to say please, you're so. supposed to say work. <laughs> no. I mean, obviously I'm working. I don't think I have anything. Yeah, uh, let's see. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. I'm gone. Long day. I got all day. Energy. I love that. That's my long day.
27th Ward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you? 27th Ward? Sure. Yeah, 27th Ward. That's a Wednesday. Yeah. Anything on the 27th? I'm at your beck and call. Now what time? That's the difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> John, what time does the next guy come in on Wednesday? 59. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Three p.m. <laughs> <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, military <laughs> guy. So, would it, would it? It might be better to just so if John doesn't get called away, would three o'clock be okay? So then that would be you, wise, yeah. Because if you do it in the morning, I mean, there's a chance if there's a call, I gotta go because I'm the only one working there. You can't radio in and say I'll, I'll get to it in a minute. I'm doing it. The, uh, Depending on what it is, but that's not advisable. <laughs> <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> so. You, so basically, you're saying you're on shift in the three, 1500. Yeah. Yes. Three o'clock for them. For me, yeah. yes. Thank you. So why don't we shoot for 1600? Because if he gets called to a call right at the end, it could take him a while to work through the call. Don't jinx me. It's four. What's that? Don't jinx the four. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse doesn't count that. <laughs> 6 a.m., four, four o'clock. 4 p.m. Yeah. right here? Yeah. Yes. Four o'clock? Four p.m. Okay. Four p.m. I will let uh, Chris know. Kathy Jean, is that good? Parker, is that good? That works. Thank you. Thank you. Right here, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Write yeah. <coughs> that in my calendar. Okay. All right. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Whole business um, in your packets uh, is an MOU created by uh, Attorney Frizzell um, for the Davis project, um, outlining the responsibility, the, basically the timeline and the responsibilities for the proposed realignment or road realignment from Mount Prospect Road to alleviate the, um, the tree issue. issue. Um, want to see if you guys were comfortable with it. Um, I haven't passed it by Mr. Davidge yet. I just want to make sure it was good with you. I had read through it and I felt it hit all the parts that we had uh, we discussed. I was fine with it. I, I read through it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, you, this is your project. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I read through it today and I thought it looked good. I did too. Good. Gave firm deadlines for what he needed to meet. Yeah. Make a motion to accept the memorandum of understanding with Mr. Davidge. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Send it away. All right. Thank you. Also in your packet was another letter to um, Mr. Benoit at 600 Main Street concerning his noncompliance with previously approved site plans. There was a letter that was sent out on your behalf end of June, beginning of July, seeking a, a, a meeting with him. Um, he has not come forward to, um, to meet with you. So this is the next step, basically saying, basically, since you're ignoring the, the opportunity to discuss the issues with the select board, um, I feel the next step would be for you guys to refer this to the planning board to consider revoking the site plans. Looks good. I guess my question is, do we even have to send another letter? I mean, I find it disturbing that it Well, I think that because the first letter didn't say, didn't, the way I like to do things, and right or wrong, is I, I, I like there to be clear expectations. So in that first letter, it didn't, it didn't say that if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. Right. So because this, this is just saying that it's kind of doing the same thing. This is saying that we are, it is going to go to this. If you guys decide that you agree with the letter, it is going to the planning board to consider revoking the site plan. Um, it's not telling, it's not giving them another chance. It's just saying this is what we're going to do now. Um, just to keep him, make sure he's informed of what the, ne the next steps that we're doing are. So it's just how I like to do stuff. I like to be clear expectations and understanding. And I understand that. I just, uh, it's always the last minute. Well, it's not, it, it, yeah, and I mean, that, at, at this point, at this point, it's basically in the planning board's hands. If, if they, the way the letter is, is written is, 
based on your, your, your lack of follow through, we, we are referring this to the planning board to consider revoking that. Like I said, they, it's up to the planning board to consider what they want to do. If, if they want to consider revoking it, then we start the process, which requires a public hearing with notice to abutters and so on and so forth. So this is a painful process. It is. That's e the law. E either That's way. The law. And, it, and it's the law, and I completely understand that. I just very frustrated with total lack of cooperation on many fronts. Yep. So I've got no problem with the letter. I just I don't disagree with you no, at all. I don't. Send it. Yes. Send her Brenner. <laughs> and I don't really think we need to take a vote on that or no. do you no. want a vote? That's no. My it's, name's on the letter, so. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, like I said, it's very frustrating that we're going through this. We've tried to bend over backwards <coughs> to accommodate the landowner and just ignoring us at well, this point. Well, I, I, I agree, and I think that's the point. We, we have bent over backwards, so there, sh there shouldn't be any, oh, you're not treating me fairly type of thing because he's been treated more than, than fairly, and now it's, it's getting it's to the point where now there needs to be some some repercussions from from the actions so that's where we're at okay so that'll go out tomorrow John I'll, uh, I'll yeah that'll be in the morning yeah thank you is that um, for all three properties <clears throat> no it's just going to be for the 600 main street right now um the also old business i think it was mr savage who brought up the the yeah uh, Coming back to something you asked about, um, <laughs> the signs, the crosswalk close signs, the barrels that are out, I did reach out to DOT. They are going to be removed this week. Which um, one was? Those big barrels that say crosswalk closed. No more crosswalks. Not that they're stopping anyone from crossing. No, the crosswalks <laughs> were, but. Old, old habits die hard. Well, you so can't remove the most popular crosswalks in town. <laughs> <laughs> but. We'll go with it for now. Um, so that's that. Next item would be the selectman, select board member reports. Do you have anything to report? I no. still need to get with you to talk about Depot Street. Yep. Um, it's starting to slow down for me now, so All right. I'll probably be in next week to see if we can get a hold of Jim. Very good. Okay. And we're still trying to set up the meeting for the <coughs> proposed pilot. Pilot for Norwich. Yeah. So yeah, you saw you were attached to an email. I sent to them yep. trying to, to schedule a meeting at some point with them. Yep. The pilot. The pilot agreement so. on the uh, array. But uh, they're, they're backing out of this project, right? I don't know. I didn't hear that. Yeah. I, heard, I heard it. I heard. Yeah, they heard. Day. They put a letter and they submitted a letter. They they're withdrawing this. Yeah. Well, then I guess their response to me will be we're backing out, so there's no need to move. <laughs> I was just going to say there is, because we. Um, I'm glad we have these select board meetings, the select board member reports. <laughs> no, I'm not part of that, but I thought. Um, I, I hadn't seen. What's What's her name? Uh, Erica. Erica said at the planning board the other night that they were backing out that. Uh, Brexit's are looking to do something else with that property. Did not hear that. Yeah, they're looking for some kind of housing now for that land, land money. They're after going after it now because they they're backing out of the uh, project. That's what I heard. Shane, you heard it too. I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know you. Heard, I heard you made a comment. Well, I will wait and see. There's an email out there. I haven't gotten a response yet. I will. I will update you when I get a response. So. I'm glad. Thanks for letting me know. I'm not going to shed tears if they do. So. Well, I mean, I don't think I it's a bad project, but I don't <laughs> think uh, their initial offer was kind of crazy, even though we didn't make a comment on it. But that is that. I'll just leave it at that. That <laughs> um, it. So we'll stand by on that. Might be off the hook, Leon. Yeah. yeah. Your project could be done. I like that. <laughs> Any other reports? And then just mine will be Thursday at 4, right? Yeah. We're yeah, going to start so this. If we have any, anybody else come forward interested? No, I, I have. And what, what I'm going to do is when I post the notice of the meeting, I'm going to put in there anyone interest, anybody else interested can come, express their interest. I had spoken um, 
So for what we're talking about, the Energy Committee is going to have their first meeting Thursday at 5 up here in the Town Hall. Um, I mentioned to Leanne about, I, I, I'm hesitant to put anything in the newspaper because it gets nothing, but it costs something. So that's why I would much rather put the posting on our, on our website and then on our Facebook page and see what we get from that. I put ads in the paper for jobs, I put ads in the paper for for service on other committee boards and committees and I get nothing. And we get, in, depending on the paper, anywhere from 80 bucks to 150 bucks charge. So I'm not doing it. Unless you tell me I have to. So that's how we're going to operate that way. But, so that's when the meeting is for the energy committee. Five. You said five, he said four. Is that five? It's five. It's at five. I said four, but it's five. It's at five. Very five. Um, all right. So other information is, as Robin said, we held what was called price training. I think it's citizens' response to active shooter event. Um, Trooper Ladd had put it on at the state police. It was attended by a good two dozen individuals. It was, it was at least two hour training. Just. Um, Understanding what to do in events um, like that, um, what to look for to, to prepare for them, how to, you know, strategies to not escalate an individual, potential strategies to de-escalate an individual. I mean, the best way to avoid something is to not have it happen to begin with. So it's very good training. Um, I think that, that the staff got a lot out of it. At some point, I would like to organize something for the boards, the volunteer boards, to try to have as one session with as many as possible, so I'll try to coordinate that with um, with the committees and boards as well as, as um, Sergeant Ladd as well at some point. So, um, Robin, in your packets, has an update on, on the Lancaster Broadband Committee update. Um, we also, and that will come to any of your October meeting, we also, the county is continuing on with their broadband project. We didn't um, actively participate in that, that their first phase, mainly because at the time that started, I had just started as town manager, so I was doing both the planning and town manager. In my capacity was scrapped, but then we were also starting the, the Lancaster project with the Northern Forest Center, so it didn't seem didn't seem like a good good investment of time to be in doing both at the same time when you didn't have enough time to do the one. Um, so we forego went the the county one, but they've asked us to participate again. So the next meeting, there'll be a, a letter for you guys to review with some information on it, and then a, a vote to um, enter or not enter. But I think it'd be beneficial for us to to jump on board with them on this one too. We're a little bit different different uh, capacity level right now. So um, also in your packet, there's a letter from the liquor commission. Notice um, of a of an applicant for a liquor license, and pardon my language, but the business name is Badass Penny, Penny and Jay Robertson, have made application to the Division of Enforcement for a retail tobacco liquor license um, for 112 Main Street, which is a Lancaster motor, and so I'm not sure what what is transpiring. Maybe <coughs> management or ownership of the cigar bar is changing, but it's the cigar bar. Yeah. Okay. It is the Lancaster Motor, and that's all yep. I know. Whether okay. it's the cigar bar or maybe potentially another one, I've got no idea. Well, but, uh, I haven't got a request for an inspection. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's it. So if you have any any issues with the, the commission approving that, then let me know. Otherwise, we basically just approve them. Uh, land use permits. We have a land use permit for uh, Peter Bouchard at 26 Bunker Hill Street to demo an existing shed and repurpose the materials and construct a stick built two bay garage with um, architectural shingles. Um, no, no utilities, all on a concrete slab. Uh, Jenny and Adam Adair at 20 Brook Road to install a rooftop uh, solar array. Travis McNally and Caroline Krause, 683 Main Street, construct a detached uh, stick-built garage uh, 
all on slab with, with a 12 by 12 carport on a gravel pad. And the last one is Eric, uh, owner, owner Ronald Crane, and the applicant is Eric Fiore, who's the contractor, and it's at 23 Garland Road to demo an existing 12 by 16 deck and replace with a stick built 2 by 2 by 10 framing, open deck with railing, on solid tubes, meaning all setbacks. And that is all I've got. Else uh, have they completed all the sewer cleaning and relining at this I, point? Or? I think they still have a little bit more um, to do on the cleaning, uh, the lining. I, got, I, I think they have a little bit more to do on Middle Street. They did Bunker Hill and they have a section on Middle Street that they worked on all day Friday and I'm not quite sure whether that got finished yet or not. I know they're not back today but it could just be because of the weather. No, but I get the impression that they weren't completed on Middle Street on Friday. Okay. It's just good to see that they were actively yeah. doing preventive maintenance and getting the lining done. Yeah. yeah. There is a, um, and Tim will probably bring it up at the, when he meets um, next month, but at the um, wastewater treatment plant, the, the float gauge um, broke down, so they have to rebuild another one. So they, not a major thing, but they're going to have that. Um, see about Will Coleman coming in a new flow for that stainless steel one, so it doesn't rot away in the, in the caustic water. Yeah. Okay. All right. All righty. Any anybody have any comments or anything? All righty. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We adjourn.